Hello and welcome to Chilly Bee Gaming. I'm Evie, and today we're going to finish off some of the things in control as part of our Sunday Fun Day playlist, purely because I've got something else lined up for us to play, but I need to do a couple of things on it first. So, let's get into this. Right. So what have we got that we can actually do? Talk to the board. Well, all right then. Let's talk to the board in the hotline chamber. So I need to go this way, I think. Is it this way? When do you think Marshall's coming back? Maybe. Oh, there's, well, there's Dylan. Not looking massively well. I'll Let's just go and have a look at him. For you when you wake up, brother. Can we go in? No. Yeah. If you wake up. Well, that's it. If, if he wakes up ever. It's not good, it's not good. Alright, folks. Well, why not? She, she... Wait a minute. What's in there? Can we open this? Did we not open this before? Ooh. Oh, here we go. What's this? Para-utility. Examination of paranatural topics, objects of power and their para-utility. Summary. Objects of power are unique in their capacity to grant certain individuals paranatural abilities. We call these individuals para-utilitarians. The potency of these abilities depends on the para-utilitarian. Using the redacted object of power as an example, some para-utilitarians can achieve a throw distance of redacted, while others are only capable of as little as redacted. See Dr. Darling presentation 1115 for more information. What exactly determines an individual's paranatural competence is unknown, but it is largely believed that some redacted exists within the body and that, like all muscles, it can be exercised. To continue my analysis, I have officially requested access to the Northmoor records, considering he is one of the most established para-utilitarians the Bureau has ever seen. Dr Darling is still considering the request. Refer to file 8-54-1982 for full report. Oh! Interesting, you see, there's there's different para utilitarians, some more powerful than others. I'm imagining that that's that's what Jesse and Dylan kind of were, para utilitarians. Maybe, who knows? Okay, let's go down here, and uh, we'll go and. What's this? Ooh. Television proposal. What? Federal Bureau of Control, television show proposal. Based on the success of America Overnight, we would like to propose the creation of a television series that presents superstition and sceptical thought as entertainment in order to popularise these concepts among the civilian population and create less resistance to redirecting information regarding public paranatural events. We can also use a solid media outlet to test paranatural concepts on civilian audiences, seeing how they react to certain facts, presented as fiction, in the event that the Bureau ever decides to make certain realities public knowledge. There are various show licenses that we could purchase and reboot rather than starting from scratch. One particular property seems promising, especially considering its content and tone are precisely what we're looking for. It's called Night Springs and has been off the air for years now. Ah yes, we've, we've seen Night Springs. In good old Alan Wake, we've seen it. All right, so let's have a look. Fuck, this place is a pain in the ass. Sometimes. Good God, dude! Nobody, get, nobody gets quite so annoyed. All right, let's 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 do the old. Uh, ooh, we've got some abilities to use. What? Ground slam. Ooh. Ground slam might be good. What's this? Energy. Maybe more energy would be good. Maybe more health would be good. God, it only costs two. Screw it, why not? Let's have that. Um, launch damage. We've got four. Seize duration. Levitate, four. Mm, that might be quite good. Ground slam, you know, but let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. Let's, oh, outfits. We're going to have an outfit now. Candidate P7. Really, I'm not going to lie. Actually, that looks really comfortable. Office assistant, director's suit, or civilian. I prefer the 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 civilian, if I'm being honest. Yeah, 
let's 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 stick with what Jesse normally has. Okay, fast travel. So we want to go to the hotline chamber, do we not? How do we get there? Oh, can we not get there? Do we have to just... Yeah, I think we just have to walk. So... Is it up? We have to go up the lift. Director. Director. The elevator. What? There was something there. Reaching for her. Trying to make her act. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man. What? A hunger in the dark. Investigation sector. Oh. Investigation sector, huh? We should check this out. Do you know we should? Let's let's do it. Let's do it. I'm interested. Um investigation sector. I want to know. Alan Wake, this is the crossover. Cuz that was mentioned in here as being like a paranormal event, wasn't it? Or a paranormal, I don't know, thing. Hello? Can we Hello? Hello? Oh. Can we Oh, yeah, this is not creepy as, as as all hell, is it? Okay. Oh, God, all right. Explore the investigation sector. Well, that's fine. Hello? Hello. Anyone here? Guess not. Anyway. What's this? Missing agents. Redacted, 2017. Mr. Kirkland, here are latest agents confirmed missing, presumed dead, from the containment breach yesterday. Agent Jonathan Connor, researcher Ezra Cruz, Agent Caroline Dempsey, Agent Lindsay Malcolm, Agent Charles Murray, Agent Derek Shah. Letters of condolence will be delivered to you to sign prior to sending them to their families. You will be updated as soon as additional confirmations are made. Also, per your request, a network engineer checked how many cases were backed up digitally. Unfortunately, a large number of active investigations were not archived yet, and the only hard copies of reports exist behind the firebreak. They're lost, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. Interesting, though, you know. What have we not read? Oh. Okay. Fair enough. Slide projector. Oh, we didn't read this, did we? Uh, slide projector OOP15-UE. Redacted. Description para utility. The object is a redacted with a vertical tray. The object creates redacted. See Dr. Dahl in presentation 26.1 for more in details. The only redacted to successfully produce this effect resulted in the capturing the capture of redacted. See Dr. Dahl in presentation 26.3 for more details. Object has not been successfully bound. The para utility of this object does not require binding. Background. Discovered when the Bureau responded to redacted, redacted, C-A-W-E-2-4 case file for more information. Many of the accompanying redacted were redacted, see files P6, on P6 and P7 for details. Yeah, we burned the slides. The entirety of the redacted was transported to the Bureau for examination to find additional redacted or other altered materials. The ashtray and the cigarette. Ooh. Ashtray and cigarette, OOP 11-KE. Containment procedure. No unique procedures required. Description slash para utility. The object is a steel ashtray with a maze engraved on its bottom. An ever-burning cigarette rests in it. When bound, the object allows para utilitarians to create a maze of shifting corridors without adjusting the dimensions of space around it. This maze forms wherever the object is placed. Only the binder can navigate the maze, though they may allow others through. The object is currently bound to director trench. Background. The object was discovered at Redacted by a team of rangers sent to a care facility for the elderly that had become the centre of numerous missing persons reports. Local authorities also disappeared inside after responding to reports. Agent Redacted discovered the object in a Redacted, which indicates it was the source of the disappearances. The whereabouts of the missing persons are still unknown, though they are presumed to be lost in the maze. Damn! Alright, multimedia... Oh yeah, we've, we've seen all these in the hotline. We still have to... Uh... Seems a lot more crowded than the rest of the Bureau. What, here? Does it? 
tractor supplement. What? Borrow tractor AI82-KE supplementary materials. Note, miscommunication led to a local coroner examining the body of William Burrow. Burrow, William, male, Caucasian. Case summary, 33-year-old man found dead on his property per police report. Remains obtained from coroner's office also include blood, urine, bile, stomach contents and bone fragments. Autopsy findings, blunt force injuries, head, lacerations, left ear slash cheek, blunt force injuries, extremities, dislocation, right knee, complete avulsion of the right upper extremity with associated fracture to the proximal right humerus. Extensive trauma, abdominal region, complete avulsion of the multiple internal organs, including stomach, heart, liver, pancreas, kidneys, and portion of the large and small intestine, all missing from scene. Conclusion, in my opinion, it is my opinion that Mr. Burrow's death is not the result of a mechanical accident, as claimed by the authorities. The removal of organs is consistent with animal attack. Really? Really? Wait, it's a Polaris point. Can we... Is there any way we can just... What's this? My God, another one? Resignation letter. Who's resigning? Okay. Federal Bureau of Control. Redacted of Redacted 2019. To whom it may concern, it is with great anger and regret that I tender my resignation as Head of Investigations for the Federal Bureau of Control. I do this in protest of the rampant disregard for my department's redacted. My staff cannot continue to work in these conditions. Previous requests and warnings have fallen on deaf ears, so I must now rely on my actions to speak louder than my words ever could. I blame this situation on our redacted, who has routinely ignored my request for assistance in reclaiming the parts of the investigation sets are lost to the redacted loose inside. I will never forget the screams of braid agents begging for us to open that fire break. I will carry that shame for the rest of my days. The redacted has failed his agents. I shall never forgive him for this. Sincerely, William Kirkland. Well, wow. All right. So something happened here. Something got loose and um, agents died because of it. That's a little, um, a little bad. Go away. Oh, my God. How could I miss so many times? Dear me. What's this? Staffing issue. Oh, my. Mr. Dennis, so yes, there is an increase in AWE cases, and yes, it would be a good idea to put together a special task force to examine exactly why that is. However, it seems that a tiny little detail slipped through the cracks. We don't have the damn staff! If you expect us to detect, investigate, and process more AWE cases, you need to give us more people. It's simple math. Between the staff we lost in the Hartman thing, and those who left for other departments after Kirkland quit, we're barely managing to keep up with the workload. Hell, just filing the paperwork for all the altered items we left behind in the sector has been an ordeal. Another thing, and this is going to sound paradoxical, but we have an overcrowding situation. This lobby isn't meant to accommodate a whole sector's worth of staff. We put forward a motion to move investigations to a more suitable location months ago. It better not still be sat on your desk. The people are getting restless, and as Kirkland's interim replacement, it's your job to handle it. Best regards, Agent Grayson. So there was trouble in paradise, essentially. Well, trouble in... Well, maybe not trouble in paradise. That's probably a little... Do you know, I thought that said something else beginning with an F then, I was going to say. That's a little uh, on the nose. Okay, so... Oh, God, there's more. There's more. I know there's a lot of reading in this. I'm sorry. Cauldron Lake. Oh, my God. The Alan Wake thing. Okay. Federal Bureau of Control. To Chief Investigator Dennis. It happened again. Third time this year. Something certainly has it out for our redacted. Could be raccoons. The locals certainly complain about them enough. But why the hell would raccoons keep going after a monitoring station? Doesn't add up. Anyway, I've got a bureau tech going to the site next week to take a look. Next on the list of recurring problems is the staff at the Lake House Research Station. How am I supposed to effectively keep an eye on redacted lake if they won't let me see any data? Hell, I don't even know what they're researching out there. We need to petition them again to share their info with investigations agents. It's only a matter of time before this redacted hits again, and I want to be prepared. Anyway, if anyone at HQ asks why the Bright Falls report is a little thin this month, tell them it's because we couldn't take any readings. In the meantime, I might invest in some raccoon traps. Sincerely, Agent Estevez. Yeah. Cauldron Lake, yes, Cauldron Lake. Good grief. I remember it all too well. Mm, can't destroy that one. My god, there's stuff everywhere. 
Okay, Jesse, put it down. <laughs> Underhill background. <laughs> oh. Official findings report. Read Dr. Rhea Underhill. Summary. Dr. Rhea Underhill is a professor at the University of Woodrow in the United Kingdom, where she teaches biology with a focus on botany. Dr. Underhill once worked with the Bureau as a para-botanist stationed in the research sector of the oldest house. She served with no incidents or demerits and is praised by those who formerly worked with her, including Dr. Darling. Dr. Underhill has no connections to paracriminal organisations or any record of breaching her NDA since leaving the Bureau. Her civilian behaviour has been ideal, with the exception of an ongoing personal relationship with Dr. Darling that appears to have begun during their time as co-workers in the research sector and revisited intermittently ever since. Depending on the duration of her work in the oldest house, it may be required to have both parties sign a relationship clearance form. This investigation has no found no compelling reason to deny Dr. Darling's request to offer Dr. Underhill an interim position with the aim of finding a solution to the mould threshold issue. Refer to file 7-08-5286 for full report. Alright, well. My God. Director's investigation. Director investigation even. Ooh. Official findings report. Re-redacted. Internal slash confidential. Summary. Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, redacted, redacted, was launched into the redacted of Director Zacharias Trench. A recent change in redacted witnessed in Director Trench included aggressive redacted when redacted with other staff or with other staff has been observed. However, this investigation is aimed at interpreting this issue rather than proving it. Notable redacted between Director Trench and Dr. Darling has been witnessed by numerous Bureau staff. Although both declined to meet for an interview on the matter, witness accounts suggest their arguments centre around the dimensional research wing and the redacted kept inside. However, no evidence exists to confirm Director Trench's redacted as anything more than interpersonal disagreements. This investigation has concluded that Director Trench's behaviour is not indicative of any redacted and that his fitness to lead is not in question. Refer to file redacted for full report. Mm. But it was. It should have been called into question because he was under the influence of the hiss. Oh, okay. Jeez, Louise, how strong is Jesse? Destroyed that desk, man. All right. Trench, official warning. Ooh, here we go. Federal Bureau of Control. Kirkland, I'm growing tired of your blatant attempts to lay your incompetence at my doorstep. I know you want this to be true, but you are head of investigations. This failure is your responsibility. What did you think would happen? Holding a dangerous specimen in investigations. The containment sector exists for a reason. They are better trained and better equipped for this type of work. In fact, they have admirably taken on certain AWE monitoring responsibilities that your staff are no longer capable of. This happens more and more now. And don't think your petty internal investigations have gone past my notice. You are a worm. Everything I've done has been for the benefit of the Bureau. The Prime Candidate programme only failed because of Darling. You are both failures, plotting against me. You are traitors, but the truth will emerge out of you. You are choosing to become my enemy, Kirkland. You don't want to be. Zachariah Trench, Director of Federal Bureau of Control. Wow. Wow. Shady beans. Shady beans. Ooh. So I wonder if that was... That must have been when Trench was under the... Under the hisses influence then. You know? Alright, well, let's see what's in here. Hmm. It's not working. Do we a loose power core somewhere? A loose power core? Well, this one doesn't look like it's loose. Does it? Nope. Definitely fine. Oh my god, more. Darling investigation. Ooh. Official findings report regarding Dr. Casper Darling, internal slash confidential. Summary. Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, internal investigation D-084-5 was launched into the ethical practices of Dr. Casper Darling, head of research. Despite the accounts of anonymous redacted regarding inhumane treatment of a redacted currently housed in the Bureau, our official findings regarding this were inconclusive. Numerous obstacles arose during the investigation. The majority of redacted sector personnel seemed to be wholly unaware of any such redacted contained there. One redacted confirmed the redacted's code name to be redacted, but all files pertaining to that name were inaccessible, being classified under the highest clearance level. 
Investigators were similarly blocked from entering the redacted research wing to interview its staff. The matter was further complicated by the lack of clarity on what non-human paranatural entities warrant humane treatment. While this investigation cannot address any charges against Dr. Darling, we do recommend an investigation into redacted research. Refer to file 9-82-0136 for full report. They were talking about Dylan, weren't they? Must have been talking about Dylan. Casey inquiry. Mr. Dennis, a request came through recently from an FBI agent asking for all our files on Bright Falls, specifically on the disappearance of the author Alan Wake. Per the Interagency Information Exchange Agreement, I had some paper pushers gather up a folder of all the pre-approved files. Don't worry, all the inappropriate material is either missing or redacted. But I'm writing to let you know that we received this request from a special agent named Alex Casey. Sounds familiar, right? That's because Alex Casey is the name of the fictional detective in those hard-boiled crime books Alan Wake wrote. Pretty interesting that an FBI agent sharing a name with the famous character Wake wrote is looking into a case dealing with a writer's fiction coming true. I think this is worth looking into, but what's your opinion? Just give the word and I'll start surveillance on this guy, Special Investigator Gleason. Alex Casey. So did... Obviously, Alan wrote the books about Alex Casey, but did they somehow become... Did he somehow come to life? So there's a loose power cell somewhere. But where is the question? Is it through here? Can we just move some of this crap out of the way? Yes, we can. Aha! There you go. Power cell's got to be up here, hasn't it? As predicted, where is it? In here somewhere? Well. Tractor procedures? <sighs> Burra Tractor, AI 82 KE, containment procedure. Item is not in Bureau custody, non known. Description slash altered effect. A Frank Elk tractor, olive green, dried blood on the grill when it's. When last seen, item is capable of vocalised responses or growls and unmanned locomotion. Considered highly aggressive and dangerous. Background. The item first came to the Bureau's attention after the death of William Burrow, owner of the Burrow Farm outside of Trenton, Texas. Local authorities arrived on scene after an employee found the mutilated body of Mr. Burrow beneath his tractor. Police arrived, but were immediately driven away by the tractor. Panicked calls to federal authorities were intercepted by Bureau communications staff. A team was dispatched. Upon arrival, the agents approached the item. It responded by growling like a bear. Three agents were injured when they tried to detain the item, which escaped. Aerial searches for the item are ongoing. Speaking to Mrs. Burrow only revealed that she had a domestic altercation with Mr. Burrow earlier the night of the incident. Whether these events are connected is currently unknown. Hmm. Interesting, very interesting. So, okay. What's this? Ethics investigation. Here we go. Official findings report regarding the prime candidate program. Internal slash confidential. Summary. Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, investigation P-142-9 was launched into the legality of the prime candidate program, redacted by the Federal Bureau of Control. Since all known subjects relevant to the investigation used executive privilege to decline interviews, very little first-hand information was gathered. However, anonymous sources and documentation declassified by Mr. Kirkland both paint an alarmingly clear picture of systematic redacted and redacted. Redacted were brought into the oldest house and placed under redacted examination and testing with the aim of appointing one as director upon maturity. This programme has produced no successful cases and only resulted in the traumatic redacted of para naturally inclined redacted. Not only is this a breach of the Ash Act, but it flies in the face of basic human redacted. This investigation team unequivocally redacted the prime candidate programme and recommends that it be redacted immediately. Refer to file 9-82-0136 for full report. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Okay, let's, uh... Can we do something here? Power cell, power cell, power cell. Do we have to get that one from over there? Oh, really? We can't smash the bloody window. There you go. Oh, there you go. Okay. 
Now that gate should open. Yes, it should. Can we... What? Oh, for God's sake. Okay. I thought we could have just jumped out the window. Never mind. Oh, another file. Specimen escape assessment. What was the specimen, I wonder? Was it... Was it Dylan, do you suppose? Official findings report regarding incident A-49. Internal confidential. Summary. The purpose of internal investigation X-039-7 is to examine the containment failure of specimen SI-1 that resulted in the deaths of redacted agents. An inspection report of the containment equipment three days earlier showed no faults. Investigators suspected human error to be the cause, yet no department has provided any evidence to support this. Technicians were able to recover the researchers' notes on the specimen from the internal network. On the redacted of redacted, the specimen began displaying a sharp increase in aggressive redacted, cross-referencing that date with various logs found that only two events inconsistent with the sector's daily routine. One, the air filters were changed, and two, an hour prior to the incident, an, a civilian named Alice Redacted entered the sector regarding an unrelated investigation. See interview 65-F-124. Given their connection to the same AWE case, it is likely that Mrs. Redacted's presence is relevant to the specimen's escape and to the Redacted. Investigation is ongoing. Refer to file 6-23-0721 for full report. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so this is a, a point. We'll take it. Oh god, we're going back to the hotel. I'm no detective, but here? something definitely happened here. Oh yes, definitely. Good god. What's this? Blessed organization. <clears throat> Paracriminal profile. The blessed organization. Ooh. Summary. This group slash individual has operated outside the Bureau's notice for decades, perhaps longer, displaying a level of skill and caution rarely seen in paracriminal groups. A review of past cases has found various mentions of their activity over the years. In 2016, a production company called Blessed Pictures was connected to an altered K item case, as well as the death of an agent from exposure to illicit paranatural materials. In 1994, a Los Angeles-based public speaker named Chester Bless was involved in the illegal use of an altered item. In 1988, a business called Blessed Repair and Service was suspected of involvement with an object of power case, perhaps even creating it. None of these businesses or individuals have ever been located. However, their connection to appearances of altered items and objects of power is too direct to be considered circumstantial. An arrest order has been issued for any persons believed to be involved with the Blessed organization. Refer to file 7-39-0922 for full report. Uh, hmm. Paracriminals, eh? Alright. Here we go. One. Two. Three. Do we know each other? <gasps> Alan Wake. I feel... This feels familiar. The swirl? I can't seem to... Uh, I've forgotten that. I'm sorry. I'm... My name is Alan Wake. What? Oh, this is a crossover. Good God. Who are you? Two Alan Wakes? friend Tom. Tom Zane. Oh! There's nothing to worry about. Tom. The poet. Why do they look the same? The diver, you, you look different. That was just a, a role. A character. The protagonist I played in my, my old film. I'm a filmmaker. An auteur like yourself. Oh no they don't. Sorry. I thought they looked the same. We're working on this together, remember? An artistic collaboration.
You need a drink. Kippus. Kippus. Hold on. That sounds like Ati, then. Oh dear. Now, now, come on. You misunderstand me. Okay. That was the Alan Wake, the famous writer. He disappeared years ago. It was all over the news back then. Hmm. Thomas Zane was with him. The poet. Yeah. No, wait. D -d -d he was a filmmaker. I, I always remember that wrong. So, no. Does that do anything? Oh my god, okay. Do we have to turn these off? This door is this door open? No. What? Shut up. <clears throat> Anything else? No. Nope. Anything else making noise? Turn them back on, so there you go. There's nothing else in here. Okay. Oh, God. That was weird. Dr. Emil Hartman, devoured by hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Broke loose, killed everyone it could, lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came a resonance. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. Hmm. Very odd. So we cleared the way to allow us to get through. Hmm. Oh. Oh no, we can. Of course we can. With Jesse. We can just up, up, launch ourselves over there. Is that what we have to do, just suppose? Hmm. What? Ball of death. Love it. You don't suppose we have to go over there, do you? I think we have to go over there. 
Well, that is a little cuckoo bananas, because this thing will do us in, I imagine. I suppose we just have to kind of wait. Let's, let's... Already gone, dude. We're already out. All right. So this way. Why do we have a torch now? What? Interesting. All right. Creepy, damp, and abandoned. Love it. Why did Wake want me to come here? Yeah. This is almost like a a mirror image, is it? Of where we were. Um that's unique. Oh. So, things are just kind of floating around. Why? Why? What's going on? What the hell? Nothing in here. I know, I've got more important things to be doing, but what the hell is this about? Stuff just phasing in and out of existence. Doesn't look like a house shift. No, it looks like a... Like a Do I even want to know? It's like a duplication or something. I don't know. Maybe not. Do we get it? Yep. Filing and processing. Well, let's um, claim this. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. Yeah, what, what did Wake want us to come down here for? Board countermeasures, no. Langston's runaways. <sighs> well, do you know what, folks? I think we're going to leave it there for this week. I don't think we are done with control, you know. Something's just... Begging to be investigated, and I, I I have to do it. I don't know why, I just have to do it. So, until next time, be safe, be good, and look after yourselves.